We are now ready for iteration number four uh, for the project. So we completed iteration one, two, and three. Iteration four is titled, we said we're going to try to now browse the list of code. So we uh, not only, we started by setting up the project, displaying just a single code. Now we can display a code from a list at random. Now, finally, we want to be able to browse through the list of codes, uh, and that's this iteration. Again, we take it step by step and apply the app development process. So I want you, my advice to you is to resist the temptation to ignore the process. Um, you will uh, most likely say, I don't want to do that. I want to jump into Xcode and, and program and work through it. Uh, resist that temptation. This might be a simple project, but it is simple so that we can learn the practice and uh, learn the, the, the right moves, the right steps that we take. So when you get to a complex project, you naturally or have what they call the muscle memory in reference to sports or, or, or others uh, that, that, that you are just following the process in, in your head. So the process are three steps problem formulation. In the problem formulation, we define the scope and how we're going to test. And then uh, solution formulation, define the solution. And then the implementation is the action plan. So here, the scope of this iteration is to browse the list of code. So I have a list of code. I'm displaying them. I just want to keep going through uh, more than one without having to close the app and open it again. So how are we going to test this? What testing scenarios do I have? I open the app and observe that there is a code and then browse through uh, the app by clicking the uh, browse button and observe that there are different codes being displayed. Notice that by the end of this iteration, the full app will be completed. So the testing scenarios uh, of this iteration uh, might be very similar to the testing scenario of the entire app which we defined in iteration one. Uh, if not, then at the end of this uh, iteration, you would want to test, run the testing scenarios for this iteration as well as the testing scenarios for the entire app. Uh, so iteration, uh, solution formulation, we have a model, a view, and a controller. So our model, <coughs> we're not gonna change. We already have the list, the list is in file, and we loaded that list into the uh, memory represented that in an NS array and we have we know that each item in that list is a string uh, or represented in memory as a string type. The view already have a label so we need to add another component to the view that is a, a button component a UI button and um, the UI button uh, component um, allows the user to click. This is the simplest user interaction that you can have um, adjust the text property of that button to say browse and adjust the layout the color to whatever you would like in the controller so what we want to do when the user click on browse the controller needs to uh, react to that so we need to uh, connect, create our own custom function so this is not a built-in function like the view did load because that's not a built-in event this is a custom event that we are adding to our app so we need to create a custom uh, function or a custom unit inside the controller and connect them together so that every time the user clicks on that button it triggers that custom function that we created so uh, we're going to connect to the button uh, touch up inside action or event to a new function called the browse codes and we don't want any uh, to pass any data to that function and inside that function we're going to put the instructions that causes the label to change now you already know that we did that uh, because in the view did load which was another event a built-in event we called a function called uh, display code and that function generated a code at random and reset the label to that code so I don't need to reinvent the wheel actually it is a bad program bad practice in software to to uh, duplicate or uh, to duplicate steps um, and so what I want to do if, 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 if there's already a function 
that is able to uh, generate a code and reset the label to the new code, then I just need to call that function. So there's a single instruction that I need to add in the browse code function, and that's instruction to call the display code function so that a new code is being is displayed. So that's the controller, uh, the solution implementation, um, uh, the steps, the project management. Uh, we add a button component, adjust the layout in the view, connect it to the controller with a new function, a custom function. We're going to call it browse codes. And then add instructions to call the display code function that we create. If you called the function differently, then adjust the instruction here differently. The names you give to variable or data or give to functions is your own. Uh, you just have to be consistent. So you either follow my naming convention or if you want to make your own names, but then you have to follow your, your names all along. Then add the instructions and test the app. Very simple. The reason it is really simple, although in the beginning you look at the scope, oh, I want to browse everything. This must be a very heavy uh, task. And then it comes down to a single instruction, which is already calling something we already did before. Uh, it is because we created that display code function. So when we organize our code into uh, functions with distinct responsibilities, I'm able to reuse and ref reference those functions again. Sometimes these functions are in the uh, platform, in the iOS platform. So if I know about the iOS platform enough, I can use it and I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't have to challenge myself to do instructions that um, maybe um, uh, 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 too advanced. I, I just need to find what functions, either something I created, something somebody else created, or something in the iOS platform. So here it's a something that I already created, so I need to call that function, and then we test the app. So that concludes iteration number four, and this will conclude the all the iteration plan for our project and our project is now ready for deployment. Uh, by that I mean that now that you finish the development, your project moves on to the next phase. You're probably gonna present it to your client. And in fact, you the reason one of the reasons we do iteration plan is after each iteration we make a presentation to the client so that they can see what we developed and get give us feedback. So the iteration uh, each iteration builds upon the uh, the previous iteration and also the understanding of the client and the developer are going hand in hand. There's no gap uh, between the two. So uh, now we're ready to deploy. You put it on your uh, phone, you do user acceptance testing, and, and then you put the app in the store and hope that a lot of people will like it. And, and, and it takes the it becomes a product. So now this app we created a product. If if this was manufacturing, we took raw material and we created a product. And now the product need to be go to the market. So that's exactly what where we are right now. Before I let you go with this and 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 uh, with this video, I just want to uh, talk again about your own curiosity. The, the the reason you are going through this is you want to learn. And for you to learn uh, this type of work, it comes with uh, trusting your curiosity, following your curiosity, uh, having confidence in your ideas and, and following uh, through with them. I don't want to overwhelm you. I know all of you have used the phones before and you use a lot of sophisticated apps. So uh, you probably will see going through this series of uh, projects that it, it, it those things, the simple things that you now do on your devices require a lot of sophisticated development work behind it. So, uh, but you will explore this on your own. So maybe uh, try to modify the user interface a little bit, uh, either by um, modifying the uh, uh, some of the properties like colors and uh, text, uh, layout and things like that, adding uh, pictures, adding uh, different elements, uh, enhance the existing functionality. So you have the view, uh, enhance the functionality, which is the uh, features of the app, add new ones, enhance the existing ones, uh, or expand the model, um, add new codes, uh, maybe reorganize the model, challenge yourself uh, with that. I don't want you to overwhelm yourself. 
so this is really important. I want you to take this step by step. Um, so don't 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 jump the gun here. Otherwise, you'll be very overwhelmed. So take it step by step. But at the same time, I want you every step of the way. I want you to add your own personality, to add your own interest to the apps that we create. Don't just follow what I create. There's a lot of room for you to add your own thing, and I want you to allocate time to add your own thing. So maybe add another iteration, iteration five, in which try to do something. Uh, as simple as change the colors uh, to as complex as change the functionality or the data structure.